I'm starting the show again. And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Money. Yes. Are you ready for another exciting, pulse-pounding, heart-stopping, artery-clogging, testicle-grabbing installment of everyone's favorite podcast segment, Bunny Versus, starring the incomparable Bunny Williams? Are you ready? Are you pumped? Are you amped? Are you jazzed? Are you psyched? Are you primed? Are you hyped up? Are you hyped? Are you ready? Are you ready, Bunny? Yeah, pretty much so. Okay. Then without any further ado, it's time once again for Bunny Versus. Now here is your host, Bonnie Williams. Take it away, Bunny. Deuteronomy is the best testicle grabbing book in the Bible. Uh, yes. Deuteronomy is also the oldest cat in the movie Cat. <laughs> even older than the theater cat his name escapes me but that was that was the part that really dragged the entire movie down which is weird because the entire movie drags the movie down but that part drags it down even further yeah yeah Deuteronomy Deuteronomy yes Plus. yeah if, if Thank you, Gus the Theater Cat. Now uh, with save. It's Gus the Theater Cat. Ah. Uh, if when two men are fighting, the husband, the, the wife of one of the men grabs the other man's genitals in defense of her husband, she should be put should to death. Is? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking of something different. One of my favorite passages in the Bible. Um, yeah, yeah, the Bible, man. I read the Bible, and uh, I don't remember off the top of my head who wrote that, but uh, motherfucker can write. Eh, I, I don't know. Time. I think it's a. I think there's some definitely some lazy. It needed better editing. It needed a, a, definitely a second draft. Well, yeah, I had a hard time with following the plot, but um, I mean, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Goosebumps. You ever read those? No. Yeah, it, yeah, the Bible kind of reminded me of like a really long Goosebumps book. You know. Did yeah. Arnold Stein write the Bible? Is that who wrote that? I don't fucking know, but but I I the Bible fucking Arnold Stein wrote, wrote Goosebumps and possibly oh, okay. the Bible. And possibly the Bible, yeah. But uh the Bible sort of worth sort of worth a, a read. You know what I liked? I liked in the nineties <coughs> when they advertised the Book of Mormon on TV. But they tried to advertise it like, did you did you know that Jesus came back a second time and traveled through America? It's all here in the Book of Mormon, a sequel to the Bible. It's Bible 2. Did you know that Jesus went to Kent, Ohio and had a potluck dinner? Yeah. It's Bible 2, even bible -er. Even you can get Bible it now from the Church yes. of Jesus Christ. Yes. I so, loved that. So, Genie's sick. Uh, episode of one of Dabney is almost done. That's Genie what's going is sick. On. What, uh, happened, what happened to Genie? Is she, she pregnant? She just got, she was pretty okay yesterday. She just got mm. something. You mm. know, but she works with Jeremy Grimy kids every day. That's a good point. You need to... Does she take Airborne? Huh? No. Does she take Airborne? She needs to take Airborne. What's that? It's... <coughs> is it a pill? Is it a powder? Amber, I'm looking at you. Airborne. Is it a powder you put in a drink? Or is it a pill you put in a drink? Or is it a pill you take? It's, 
it's a thing to boost your immunity system. And every teacher I've ever heard, I've ever known who teaches kids just swears on taking airborne all the time. And that's what keeps them from being sick around all of the gross little kids. Yes. So, yeah. So she, so she has to take woke up sick today. And mm. just before the show, vomited in a spectacular way. Just, just, it, it was awesome. As far as throwing up goes, I really need to give it a 10. It was just, it was, it was beautiful. In my mind, she vomited like the scene at the end of Ocean's Eleven where they're in front of the Bellagio and the fountains are happening. So, like, Jeannie goes to vomit and suddenly the song Claire de Lune starts playing and she puts her head back and just a fountain of vomit. And suddenly all of the Ocean's Eleven are there watching Jeannie's vomit shoot up into the air as they, as they quietly look at each other and nod because this is the end of the caper. Well, no, so it, it was it was very very similar to that because to the, no. she was sitting in the smoking room saying that she was feeling sick, and then she was like, "Oh my god!" And then she gets up and she starts heading toward the door, and then she's trying to cover her mouth. And she gets to the door, and she couldn't make it through. So it was, there was a nice spray through the fingers where, where we were able to get, like, multiple streams going, you know? And then hitting the closed door and wall, you know, and kind of causing, a, like, like, a force field effect almost, you know? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was yeah. a good one. It was it was a good one. I am very proud of her. Well, let me tell you something, Bunny. Um, most people, when hearing this story, would stop eating their chunky, creamy potato soup. Yeah. But I am cut from a different cloth. Damn right you are. Most people, upon hearing of a uh, genie's vomit screams, would look at their creamy, chunky potato soup and say, "Maybe I should stop eating this." Not me. Not me. So, uh, boom. boom. There you go. Seriously, can you stop meowing? Like for real. Crazy cats. Dan Quayle for the win. Dan Quayle. I did Dan not, yeah. Quayle. What a crazy week. The problem that I have with politics is that the Republicans are all two-faced, number one. Is that the Republicans who are now saying that we shouldn't raise the debt ceiling because that will bankrupt our grandchildren, had no problem raising the debt ceiling when Trump was president, that the Republicans who just a few years ago said, we're at a crisis and we need to stop this crisis, we need to raise the debt ceiling because we cannot bankrupt our country. Now that Democrats are in charge, those same people are saying, we're not gonna raise the debt ceiling and once the entire government is closed down, we, the people who caused it to happen, will all go on TV and say, why would the Democrats allow this to happen? Yeah. And, and so the Republicans are all two-faced. But the problem that I have is that the Republicans are making it harder to vote. Republicans are making abortions illegal. Republicans are ruining America. And what the Democrats are saying is the Democrats are all saying, oh, this is horrible. And the only way to stop it is, number one, to donate to my campaign. And number two, 
to just vote for every single solitary Democrat, no matter what. Yeah. And, uh-huh. and like and like Joe Biden is out there saying, yeah, Republicans are making it hard to hard to vote. If only somebody there was somebody out something there who could this. do something. If only there was somebody out there who could do something <laughs> about it. Yeah. But not me, the fucking president. Uh huh. And it's like the Democrats are all talk and no actual fucking action. Yeah. Meanwhile, all of the Democratic voters are just out there saying, oh, retweet if you support our president. Kudos to our president. But like. Biden has locked up more uh, brown kids in cages than Trump ever did. He 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 did not. Uh, abolish ice he raised ice's budget he's still out there doing those uh uh uh, obama era drone strikes that are killing innocent people and innocent families uh and when when uh george bush was out there saying we need to continue the war on drugs because drugs are horrible and drugs are in no way good and we need to abolish drugs. Uh, Senator Joe Biden was saying, uh, you hear what George Bush is saying? He's a pussy. We need to lock up more motherfuckers. What? You thought about smoking marijuana? Let's lock you up in prison for a million fucking years. And now that person is president. And while all of America is getting to be more and more comfortable with the legalization of marijuana, our president is still like, instead of smoking marijuana, how about we all just play stickball? Yeah. And and it's like, he is a very Republican Democrat. And while the Republicans are being batshit insane and talking about how, oh, uh, the Democrats, they're all communists and they're all eating babies. Meanwhile, our Democratic president is still out here like, we need to embrace our Republican brothers with open arms. And the reason why he's saying that is he is a very Republican Democrat. And we need to hold Biden accountable and not just 100% support him because he is doing some fucked up shit right now. Well, but that's the thing. Like, like, like I've gotten really pretty quiet because I'm fucking tired of fighting everybody. Now I got to fight fucking blue MAGA and I'm not in the mood anymore. It's over. You know, just let's face facts. It's fucking over and nothing is going to be done. We're going to die in climate crisis. Yeah, because we're not doing a fucking thing about it, and the, all we could possibly do now is try to relieve suffering as much as humanly possible, and that's it. Because it's not getting any better. Yeah, you know, this yeah. is exactly what I was saying. Like, okay, the beast Raban is gone. Now we have Fade Heart coming in, and we're much happier in our oppression now. Yeah. But nothing changes. You know, nothing. You, you, you get the fucking smoke and mirrors with the Democrats. Oh, look at this infrastructure bill. Isn't this beautiful? We're going to pass this infrastructure bill. You know, and, and it was. It was an absolutely beautiful bill that would do a whole lot of good, you know, and help this country and help the environment. And <laughs> they can't even pass it through the Democrats. They can't get it past the fucking Democrats. The Democratic Party can't get its own bill, which has already been cut in half, past the fucking Democrats. We don't need the Republicans to fuck us. We have the Democrats to fuck us. Yeah. And then Biden is, is catering, trying to cater so much to Republicans, and it's like I have I have made this fucking whatever eight trillion dollar infrastructure bill. What do you think, Republicans? You want to vote on this? We will not vote on this bill unless there's a provision in the bill 
to kill all minorities. And Biden is the sort of president who's like, maybe we can come to a, an agreement that benefits the both of us. Maybe only kill some minorities. Yeah. That's called unity. And it's like, no, the Republicans are becoming political terrorists holding our entire country hostage. Maybe we shouldn't be fucking working with them and their yeah. fucking insanity. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't be embracing them as best fucking friends. Whoa, Fuck whoa, off. Whoa, whoa. Forget about embracing them. How about getting insurrectionists out of our fucking government? Can that be a priority somewhere? Can it be a little bit of a priority? Can, can we do something about the senators and representatives who helped the January 6th insurrectionists? Can we do something about that? Yeah. It's very difficult to be political right now. Because not only do you have to fight the right, but you also have to fight a good portion of the left. There, there is no right or left. There's what is good for the corporations. That's it. Yeah. It's just getting very tiring. It's just a different dog and pony show. So, you know, are you going to watch Colbert or are you going to watch Jimmy Kimmel? That's the yeah. difference. Yeah. So, yay, fun. Uh... So my wife is leaving. What? Yeah, what's up with that? Uh, my wife has two jobs. She is the she is a manager at a nationwide medical supply company. I'm not a manager. You are a manager. I'm not a manager. Then what are you? I am a client specialist. Which is a type of manager. No. I'm trying to build you up. Like, what? What was my job at the bookstore? My documents. I, 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 I was a manager with a major book chain. You were, so. Which so. is not entirely a lie, but not one hundred percent true. You are a manager at a nationwide yes. man- medical supply company. <coughs> but in my wife's spare time, she is a instrumental in helping create a a small time independent publishing company called duck prince press uh she is one of the uh first people to uh join this small time indie publisher that focuses on publishing uh fan fiction Authors, uh, L- yeah, it, it, I was getting to it. Miss Yell across the house. The it, it, the the publishing company it focuses on publishing the original works of fan fiction authors, of which there's a lot, and it's also a very pro LGBTQIA publishing company. And so uh, next week, my wife is going to New York to okay. uh, help with the company. So with the publishing company. So getting real uh, hoity-toity over here. My yeah. wife is heading to, and I don't even want to say this out loud because I'm not 100%. I, no, I want to say it. My, you just said you didn't want to. I, I don't because I'm not certain that I have it perfect, but Bunny will be able to guide me. My wife is going to Schenectady. Schenectady? Wait, Schenectady. say that again? What? Schenectady. 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 Sk-sk-flectomy. My wife is heading to hysterectomy, New York, to work with her uh, publishing company that she is a part of. <coughs> That's me. 
So I'm throwing a huge party. BYOB, bring your own bitches. Yes. It's a publishing company. You should have said books. Oh, well, that's you when you go to Hysterectomy, New York. I'm here, and it's it's a different BYOB. Well, for this for this party, will there be an amazingly hot chick that you created on your computer? No, but there Who's will magic? be no, but there will be a lot of regular chicks in glasses. But when they take off those glasses, Hachi Mama, you had no idea they've been attractive this whole time. Okay, a lot of that. But can they do magic? Yeah, it's it's gonna be pretty amazing. Uh, can I just take this time to say that I love this week's movie, but the soundtrack made me want to cut my own ears off? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna have some fun with this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go for it, honey. Just go for it. Just go for it. Just go for it. That one that that one that. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. But yeah, no, it was a good movie, but there were parts of the soundtrack where I just wanted to shove ice picks into my ears. But I yes. think that was kind of the point. Uh yeah, they were really for Genie, it was the clock. Oh, the the first eleven minutes drove me fucking insane. <sighs> That goddamn clock. I felt like I was in a... I felt like I was in an Edgar Allan Poe story. And that clock was the sound of the beating heart of the person I have in the floorboards. Yes. Yes, but all of the sounds were exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah. To the nth degree like that. The shave itself. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah, my, my wife is going to be leaving, and I have mixed feelings about that. I'm excited for her. It's going to be going on a plane, heading across the, you know, half of the country, getting a rental car, going to upstate New York. Look, and look at you, you know? Um, Classy. Yeah, it's really difficult to try to prepare yourself for a trip that you're taking while also not trying to think about the fact that this trip requires you to get on four separate planes. Yeah. During yeah. a pandemic. Yeah. Um, so it's very tricky to do and leads to a lot of procrastination. Yeah, my wife's going on a plane during the pandemic. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that she gets one of those flights where a crazy white person is all crazy and they have to duct tape them to the chair. Yes. So don't worry. Rest assured, if it, if this is one of any of my flights have that, I will be sure to film it and send it. Yeah. Awesome. I will pay for in-flight Wi-Fi to live stream. Hell yeah. I don't know. That was a good high five. There you go. That's the I, flavor. I'm really thinking that if this trend goes on, we all need to start carrying like rainbow duct tape that we thinking. can not only duct tape somebody to a chair with we can then tell him that because it's rainbow duct tape they're gonna turn gay right there nice before you get off this plane you're gonna be a homosexual yeah that's some that's some alex jones level uh, conspiracy right there. And, and I'm down everybody with... on the plane, whenever they walk by, they can comment on how gayer he is getting. Yeah. Like, oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Every time you pass, just give him a little snap. I'm just getting over a severe sinus infection, and my ears are still clogged. Yeah. So... This will be a fun game while uh, watching this podcast on Twitch or YouTube to see how many times I wiggle my jaw like this. <laughs> try and unpop, to try and pop my ears because my hearing is not at 100% right now. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I'm really excited to talk about this week's movie and I'm really excited to... 
this week's movie reminded me of a Schoolhouse Rock song, which I was not expecting. But yeah, we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, a school, one of my favorite Schoolhouse Rock songs. And also, uh, I did like a little bit of shopping while trying to learn about the real life aspect of parts of this movie. Yeah. And that will lead me to get all Jackie Daytona about uh, minor league basketball, which I didn't even know was a thing. I've heard of minor league baseball, yeah. but I didn't know minor league basketball was a thing. Anyway, so that's that's later on in the show. So stay tuned if you're listening or watching. Uh, yeah. So. So yeah. So uh, Genie is sick. Yes. Do you need? Do you need an exorcist? No, it, the, the vomit seemed to have been of a normal color. So I'm not concerned about demonic possession at this point. Yeah. You know, I, never I never understood those people that watched the movie The Exorcist and then left the theater saying, Scariest movie I've ever seen! I'll never see that again! And it's like, okay, you've never seen, you definitely never, never, you, you, you haven't seen a film that's Serbian. Yeah. Is what that tells me. <coughs> you've seen some horror films, but there are other horror films that you absolutely would not be able to survive. But, but then there are like different grades of, of horror movie. Does that necessarily make that scary? Yeah, you like know? like I feel that The Exorcist is the scariest movie for people who don't normally watch horror movies. Yeah, uh, there's a lot. I uh, The Exorcist is one of my favorite horror movies. Uh, it's and really a lot of the terror is in the fucking sound. Yeah, it is all in the sound. The sound work was fucking great on that movie. Uh. Mm -hmm really loses its edge once you stop believing in God and the supernatural and shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I feel that the actual kind of happened to Dracula and vampires too. You yeah. know? I, I I feel like I feel like I feel like the exorcist was scary during that period in time where evangelical Christians were the majority of people in power and literally felt like Satan was 100% real, walked the streets, and was in every bit of rock music. Yeah. And that nowadays, you know, like a Gen Z person could watch The Exorcist and be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You should make Mal watch The Exorcist. I mean, what would a 16-year-old think about The Exorcist? That's Mal's interesting. never seen The Exorcist? Mal's never seen The Exorcist. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah, I think they'd be laughing through that. I think. Might be, that might be something worth. That might be something worth doing. Maybe do a video. That would be interesting. Yes. Yes. We it, it might require a reaction video. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. It's some sort of reaction video. Yeah, that would be fun. Microphone, stay still. Microphone, stay still. Stay still. Stay. Stay. Okay, thank you. I want the microphone to be up so I look like a professional. How did we, how did we even get on The Exorcist? Uh, we were talking about our favorite oh, horror movies. Genie and My, demonic possession. Yes, yes. I asked if she needed an Exorcist. Yes. My yeah, no, favorite horror so. movies. It's a toss up between either Cats and The Oogie Loves and The Big Balloon Adventure. Yeah. When it comes to my favorite horror movies. 
Yeah. I mean, it, Midsommar doesn't count because as far as I'm concerned, Midsommar is a feel-good comedy. Yes. In Sweden, <coughs> in Sweden, the people, so they showed Midsommar in Sweden because like, of course they did. It was a major movie. And in Sweden, you went to a movie theater, you watch Midsommar, and motherfuckers were cracking the fuck up. Yeah. In Sweden, they thought Midsommar was the funniest fucking movie of the year. And that brings me so much joy. Nice. That, like, of course, in Sweden, this movie about the, like, evil Swedish cult is going to be fucking hilarious. If Sweden made a movie about Swedish people coming to America and suddenly these redneck Christians are trying to get them to hold fucking snakes or whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah, I'd be laughing my ass off at that, too. Well, like a yeah, but yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'd be laughing at that because, like, that's still real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> They'd be like, "Welcome to America. Here's your gun." And it's like, "Yes, that's that's America. Congratulations." You know, they might hang you from hooks for Jesus, or you know, Christ knows what. They do a lot of wacky things here. Yeah, they do. So what <laughs> is up with the shaft this week? It's a surprise. It's a surprise. When are you going? Oh, they're coming here. Okay, cool. It's a surprise. It's something completely different. And now for something completely different. We're doing a shaft, the likes of which we have never done before, and I'm excited about it. Okay, I, I I think you built that excitement pretty well because now I, like like I, I can't not know. Yeah, I, I I'm need really excited to know. about it. I need to find out. So I think we better just get on over there. Okay. So that is it for this week's Bunny Versus. And as every week, you know, people keep asking me just all the fucking time. Christ. And my answer is always the same. Self-adhesive tape? Yes, please. I love that. Love it. So until next week, cut on that.